Hello YouTube! Today we will have a look at how to use Beza build system with Go projects. If you prefer reading, this video is also available as an article. Check the pinned comment for the link. I will go over how to convert or pull existing Go projects, but first let's step through starting Golang projects from scratch using Bazel. I'm assuming that you already have Bazel installed here, if not, just quickly go to the Bazel.io website and follow the installation instructions for your system. To start, we will need the official Go language build rules that we can grab from the rules Go repository. Copy the Starlark code and put it into a file named workspace. Let's quickly go over what's happening here. The load directive allows us to pull new features to use inside of Bazel files. The HTTP archive rule will allow us to download external Bazel repositories as compressed folders over HTTP. There are similar rules for Git repositories where you can pull a specific commit. However, downloading an HTTP archive will generally be faster. With the HTTP archive available, we use it to download the rules Go repository. Note the name field. This is the name we'll use when accessing the Go build rules. The standard naming scheme is the inverted domain, followed by a namespace or user, then the project name. In this case, because the repository is part of the official Bazel organization, it uses the Bazel IO domain despite being hosted on GitHub. The following load then makes the two activation commands from the now downloaded repository available. Now with the Go rules being available, we can create a small example project. Here I have three files, one package, one test for this package and one executable. Bazel uses the same naming structure for all its language rules. The prefix is always the language followed by binary, library or test. For Go, we must specify the import path for each module so they can be correctly resolved. Ok, so that is how you would start from scratch. What if you already have a Go repository and you want to convert it into Bazel? Fortunately, there is a nifty tool for that, Gazelle. As with rules Go, we need to copy the Starlark code that imports the Gazelle tool into our workspace. You might notice that this does include the rules Go repository from the previous example. For demonstration I will be using a third party Go repository here, which I'm currently modifying for my upcoming system design course. Subscribe so you don't miss it when it launches. To run Gazelle, we need to edit to our build file as well. Specifying the prefix here is required as Gazelle will use it to determine which imports are project local. With this done, we can now run Gazelle and let it generate all build files for us. If we try to build a project, we will run into a problem because we are still missing all the dependencies. Fortunately, Gazelle can also handle that for us. You can find this command as well on the official repository. The two macro part here is optional as it just separates these dependencies from the main workspace file. With this done, we will have a depth bzl file that is uh, populated with all the dependencies we need to build the project. Personally, I run into a small hitch here. Trying to build the project results in a lot of errors coming from the Golang tools repository. Fixing it was simply a matter of removing it from the dependencies after which the project builds cleanly. One last problem that we will probably run into is that Bazel enforces hermetic tests by running each test inside of a sandbox. For unit tests, this will usually boil down to adjusting the temporary directory and using the run files mechanism for any inputs. However, for integration and system tests, there really isn't an easy fix. Most of these tests need to be redesigned to work correctly inside of Bazel. However, this effort will be definitely worthwhile. 
hermetic tests are reproducible and they tend to suffer from much lower flakiness. You can also use Gazelle to update dependencies and also to pull in new dependencies into your Bazel project without explicitly converting them. And that is all I have for you today. If you liked the video, share it with a friend or a colleague. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm always happy to answer. See you in the next one.